Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to talk about winter storage and the steps that you want to take to do that on a modern day car. What do I mean by a modern day car? A safe bet is anything that's OBD2 and newer, so 95, 96 and up. There's some different steps that you want to take for old classics and muscle cars and things like that. But today we're going to focus on winter storage for modern day car like my guest here today, Big Booty Judy. So some of you know Big Booty Judy. She's in all of my track vids, most of my track vids. And uh, today we're gonna to be discussing the do's and don'ts and some opinions and things like that around winter testing. We'll cover flat stoppers, proper battery maintenance, and protecting your car with a quality cover. There will be links to all of the products in the description. And uh, if you use those links, it helps support the channel. So here are a few things that we're gonna cover today. We're gonna talk about tires and what to do and what not to do with the proper inflation of the tires. Uh, we're gonna talk about should we put them on flat stoppers, the car, or jack stands. Um, what to do, what not to do if you have uh, magnetic ride control. Uh, we're gonna talk about oil change, what to do, when to do it and some opinions around that. Uh, we're also gonna talk about battery care. As I mentioned, we have uh, battery maintenance. So I use a battery tender, but there's lots of different options out there. C-Tech makes some great products as well. We're also gonna talk about brakes. A lot of people don't think about what to do or what not to do with, with brakes, brake rotors, things like that. We're also gonna talk about washing the car and when to do it, when not to do it, uh, what you should do before you cover it. Uh, speaking of covering it, we're going to talk about the best thing to do when it comes to covering the car, what not to use, what to use. And the other thing that a lot of people don't think about is the surface that you're going to be storing your car on. So we'll talk about dirt floors, wood, concrete, unsealed concrete, sealed concrete, and the differences and why it's important. Another thing that we're going to be talking about is fuel. Should you fill up before? Should you put stabilizer in it? We'll talk about that. Uh, also what to do if you run E85 uh, as a fuel alternative option and what you'd want to do um, when it comes to, to things like that. We'll cover all of that and uh, hopefully you enjoy the video. Okay, let's start with the easy one, tires. What should you do with your tires for winter storage? A lot of people like to overinflate their tires, uh, and it's been found to show that that actually can cause long-term damage to the tire itself. So I suggest filling up to the manufacturer's specific tire information uh, or their specific PSI. Um, most of your modern day vehicles have a sticker with tire information in the driver's side door jam. And that'll tell you what the proper inflation is. Now, depending on the environment, whether you're in a heated garage or whether it's being stored outside, you may want to inf overinflate the tire two to four PSI at most. What you don't want to do is do 10 or 15 PSI over. Uh, that can cause warping and deformation of the tire sidewall. So you want to avoid that at all possible. The reason that you may want to consider overinflating the tires two to four psi again like i mentioned is the environment it's going to be out stored outside or if it's going to be in a non climate controlled garage you may want to take in consideration that as it gets colder the pressures in the tire will drop that's where you want to consider doing two to four psi over if you know your car will be in a climate controlled area you can stick with the manufacturer of the tires recommended PSI. Speaking of that area, let's talk about how to store it. Do you want to do something like a flat stopper? So these are great for preventing flat spots. Um, even on modern tires that are built today, tires can still deform and cause flat spots if they've sat for over two weeks even. Um, it's usually not as detrimental at that short of a period of time. However, if you are going to be storing your car for winter, 
you're probably looking at a few months. You want to have the ability to keep the tire as round as possible, so a flat stopper gives you a, a nice curved surface to sit the tire. Now, if you don't have a flat stopper, you can also use jack stands to raise the car up onto and keep it up over the winter on jack stands to keep the tires off the ground. The one thing you want to keep in mind with jack stands is the type of suspension you have. For example, on the Camaro, this particular model, the SS1 LE, has a magnetic ride suspension. That's pretty common for a lot of cars today. Uh, everything from Camaros and Mustangs all the way on up to exotics like Ferraris and Lamborghinis have a form of magnetic ride control. Corvettes as well. So uh, keep in mind that my personal preference is to keep the car on flat stoppers if it has a magnetically filled uh, hydraulically controlled suspension system. That way you're not leaving the shocks fully extended for a long period of time. The next thing I want to talk about is oil change. Should you change the oil before you store your car for winter or should you change it after? Now honestly it's a lot of it is personal preference. Some folks prescribe to the methodology that I'll change the oil before and that way I get all of the, the gunk and stuff out of the engine before I put it away for winter. Uh, my personal preference is that I like to change the oil in the springtime after storage is done. And the reason for that, for me, is that with high quality oils, there's so many uh, detergents and um, chemicals inside of that oil that help prevent buildup and gunk and things like that. Plus, on most modern day vehicles, there's an oil life monitor, and it's not just based on mileage, it's based on time as well. So if I put fresh oil into the car before I put her away for the winter, when I go to get her back on the road in the springtime, my oil life monitor will already read, you know, 80% or, or 85% or something like that, where it's already showing me that the life of the oil has degraded. So I prefer to do the oil change in the springtime. Since we're already talking about areas in the engine bay, let's focus on battery maintenance. Uh, most cars today have a battery that might be tucked away, whether it's in a fender or in the trunk. Um, and what you'll see is that you'll have a positive and a negative battery post to attach to under the hood of the car. Um, or on some vehicles like mid-engine vehicles like the Corvette C8 or a lot of uh, exotic cars, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, um, there will actually be a 12 volt DC plug that you can plug your battery into. Um, in this case, on this car, there is two posts. And what I do is I hook up the battery tender to those posts, put the clamps on and set it and forget it. So speaking of batteries, a lot of people will ask me, should I take the battery out of the car? or should I keep it in the car? Wouldn't it be easier to just maintain your battery on a workbench or a shelf? Um, yeah, it could be. However, uh, a lot of today's modern vehicles have a lot of sensitive electronic equipment that rely on that slight trickle charge that the battery provides. So again, that's why I recommend the product like a Deltran battery tender or a C-Tech uh, battery trickle charger. They make great products. Um, those are the two that I can attest to. Again, there'll be links in the description below. My opinion is keep the battery in the car. Plus a lot of new cars uh, have the battery tucked away in not the most ideal spot for you to be able to pull it out. Some have it under the hood still, but uh, a lot of modern cars have the battery optimally placed uh, somewhere in the rear of the car, whether that's in the trunk, or whether it's in the rear quarter panel um, to help with weight balance and things like that. Let's talk about another item that's often overlooked and that's the brakes. The brakes? Yeah. Uh, a lot of folks will uh, wash their car and then immediately put it in storage. And what happens is that the moisture from washing the car will actually 
sit on the brake rotors. It'll cause corrosion and rust, and we definitely don't want that. Speaking of washing cars, we'll get to that in a second. However, another key item to remember with brakes is on a manual transmission vehicle, uh, I would not set the parking brake, uh, or even on an automatic, if you have a habit of setting the parking brake, don't do that. The reason not to do that is because that same corrosion moisture can uh, affect the parking brake cabling system, the, the shoe for the, the drum if, or, or the pad, depending on the type of parking brake system that you have. On top of that, it can uh, leave an imprint on the rotor and cause really strange rotor wear uh, once you pull it out of storage, especially if you have the vehicle for a few years. Well, I mentioned washing the car. So let's cover that too. A lot of folks will wash the car and then immediately cover it. That's a no-no. And the reason why is that uh, there's gonna be a lot of water and moisture trapped in the car right after you wash it. My suggestion is give it a good wash. Start with the wheels, the tires, get them nice and clean, scrub away, clean the body, do all of your detailing, but then go walk, go drive the car, right? Go take it for a, a, a spin around the block or better yet, go drive for a couple of miles. It might be the last chance you get to drive the car depending on the area that you live in. The, the reason behind that is we wanna get all that water out of the vehicle. Um, yeah, you can dry it with a towel, you can dry it with a microfiber uh, towel, you can dry it with an air cannon or an air dryer. Um, you wanna make sure you get all the water out of the nooks and crannies, especially in areas or spots like under the mirrors or dripping out of the gas cap, etc. right? So we wanna make sure that we don't have any residual water left over because when we cover the car up, we wanna make sure that we don't trap any of that water. Speaking of trapping water, Moisture is our enemy, especially when it comes to winter storage. Some of the key items that you want to keep in mind when you're doing winter storage is the environment that you're going to be in. So a lot of folks like to use tarps. Using a tarp to cover your car is a huge no-no. Uh, a tarp actually traps moisture in, not to mention the plastic on the tarp will generally scrape and scratch the paint on your car. So. What I like to use a tarp for, or what I suggest you use a tarp for, is laying it down first and then driving the car over it. In my area here, I have a sealed concrete floor. It's polyaspartic, epoxy, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I don't have to worry about moisture rising up out of the ground. However, in a lot of areas of the country, we may not have that option. You might be parking outside. You might be parking in a barn might be over dirt or on wood planks, whatever it might be, use the tarp, drive the car over it, and that'll add a protective moisture barrier for moisture seeping up out of the ground and getting into your uh, bushings and ball joints and, and rubber lines and things that uh, can over time become brittle with moisture and start to crack, things like that. I do recommend that you get a high quality car cover. This one's made by Cover King. It's their satin stretch material. This one specific to the Camaro has a little Camaro logos all over it. However, uh, there's lots of options for outdoor covers, indoor covers. Um, I'll leave manufacturer links in the description below. I can't really give you an exact product because I don't know what kind of car you drive. But if you stick to the high quality manufacturers like Cover King, like California Car Cover, uh, you'll be all set with a high quality top-notch car cover. There's still a few things that we wanna do before we cover the car though. Let's talk about moisture reduction on the inside of the car. There's actually a, an old school trick with using baking soda. Uh, get a box of baking soda, pop the top, set it on the passenger side floorboard. It helps keep the musty smell out and it helps absorb water or moisture, not necessarily. Uh, what I like to do, what I prefer to do, is use a rechargeable silica packet. It's a large silica packet that uh, I like to toss inside of the car 
somewhere in the middle near the center console. Um, if you don't have a center console that's going to really accommodate that, you can absolutely stick it on the passenger side floorboard or the driver side floorboard so that you don't forget it when you pull it out of storage. But that will help keep all the moisture out of the car. It'll help keep that musty smell out of the car as well. Another thing that I want to talk about is fuel. If you have a vehicle that runs E85, get it out of the car. If you can, either burn it off or siphon it out or whatever you need to do, get E85 out of the car for winter storage. The reason for that is uh, ethanol is extremely hydrophobic, which means it absorbs water really fast. Ethanol itself is not very corrosive. Um, however, ethanol mixed with water is extremely corrosive and you want to get as much of that E85 out. Having it 80% or 85% or 70% or even 15% ethanol in your fuel content will just build up and create moisture within the gas tank. And that leads me to my next topic, fuel stabilizer. Should you use fuel stabilizer? I don't, and here's why. Plenty of video out there with evidence to show that fuel stabilizer doesn't benefit for short-term storage. Uh, usually fuel stabilizer will benefit you for long-term storage, one year, two years, five years, somebody's being deployed overseas and they can't take the vehicle with them. Fuel stabilizer is a great option because it helps absorb the moisture within the gas tank. Uh, however, your best bet for short-term winter storage is fill up, fill it to the brim as much as you can, fill the gas tank up with high quality, top tier, premium fuel, 91 octane, 93 octane. Uh, if you can find ethanol free, 91, 93, 94 octane in your area, that's your best bet. The, the least amount of ethanol, the better. Um, here in Minnesota, our best option is either ethanol free 91 or 93 octane. We don't have too many other options besides that, but your mileage may vary in the different parts of the country that you're at. The idea is just make sure it doesn't have a ton of ethanol content because ethanol absorbs water. And water is bad, moisture kills things, especially with winter storage. One more thing that I want to talk about is a little controversial because if you do a YouTube video search, like how you found me, on what to do for winter storage, you'll see some folks recommend putting dryer vents in the exhaust tips. Uh, I don't subscribe to that method and here's why. Dryer sheet scents smell great to us, but they're repulsive to rodents like mice, rats, that kind of vermin. Um, the bad thing about a dryer sheet is once that scent fades, you've actually given the mice a really nice, comfortable place to, to start building a nest. So I understand that in other parts of the country or depending on your environment, you may need to block your exhaust tips in some sort of way. I recommend just a towel, a microfiber cloth, and then putting uh, aluminum foil over the exhaust tips for two reasons. You can use a towel to block the exhaust tip altogether, and then putting the aluminum foil over the exhaust tip will show you and have visible evidence if there was a rodent in the garage that tried to get into your exhaust tips. For me personally, I don't do anything with the exhaust tips. I'm fortunate enough to have a covered garage space that is sealed off from, from the elements. Uh, I don't have a rodent problem in the area that I live in. However, you may have a, a big rodent problem in your area and you may not have a fully sealed garage. You may have a barn that gets open throughout the winter all the time. So uh, your best bet is to block the exhaust tips some sort of way that may show you evidence that something tried to get in. Lastly, I want to talk about starting the car during winter storage. Should you start the car or not? Uh, the answer is no, you shouldn't. And it all comes back to moisture. And we talked about moisture earlier in the video, how moisture is really the enemy of all things when it comes to storage. So what happens when you start your car periodically during the winter months is that even if you let your engine get up to operating temperature, when you shut it down, it builds moisture within the engine block. And that happens every time you drive your car. 
The difference is that when you're driving it during the spring, summer, fall months, uh, you're constantly putting a, a load on the car, uh, a load on the engine, and you're working that moisture through and out the exhaust system. Um, during the winter, when you start it and let it run, get up to operating temperature and shut it down, it doesn't have that opportunity to flush all that moisture out the next time you go driving. So it just ends up sitting there. Uh, so the next time you go to start your car, think twice and keep in mind that you don't want to do that uh, during winter storage. That's going to be it for this video. I hope you found some uh, great information in it. I hope that you maybe learned something that you didn't know before. Uh, I want to thank Big Booty Judy for her cameo in the video. Um, you can find Big Booty Judy on my YouTube channel and other videos. I do a lot of track videos where I have in-car camera or visor cam or whatever it might be. Uh, thanks for also having fun with me while I shoot this video today. Um, again, product descriptions or product links will be in the description below where you can find uh, flat stoppers. I'll have a, a variety of different levels. Um, you can do some, some cheap ones to some super expensive ones. I'll link out the ones that I use. Uh, trickle chargers or battery maintenance devices like the Deltran battery tender, like the SeaTech battery maintenance devices. Um, I'll again have links in the description below. And protect your car with a good quality car cover. Don't buy a cheap tarp and throw it on there. It's a terrible thing to do. Uh, and as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, I do this because I love to do this and I love to inform people. Hopefully you love them just as much. If you do, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I'm hoping to get to that uh, special 1000 follower marker uh, and I'll see you in the next video.